Pyrokinesis. Pyrokinesis. Levitation. What more is there to learn at summer camp? Plenty. Try not to lose your mind, young psychonaut. 1989. UC Berkeley computer science grad Tim Schaefer steps off campus with a top game designer skill set, and he doesn't even know it. I never thought that I'd be um, uh, making games for a living. As a kid, I would play games all the time, but I, um, I always thought they were made by other people, or like a big corporation that somehow spit them out like a factory. Factories like the original Lucasfilm games tucked away at Skywalker Ranch in California. Headed up by the Jedi Master, George himself, Tim is selected for a role that catapults his career into a galaxy far away. In the early days, they hired a bunch of us right out of school. They picked two of us, me and Dave Grossman, out to work on Monkey Island. Then we started writing dialogue for it, and we assumed that it was just temporary dialogue, that the real writers would come along eventually and replace it. And then they're like, no, 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 that's the dialogue for the game. We were just kind of kidding. <laughs> Tim's new trademark humor and meticulously clever style yields instant classics like Full Throttle and Grim Fandango. His titles net countless awards, strong cult followings, and critical praise. In 2000, Tim parts from LucasArts with little money and a doubly fine idea. When I started at LucasArts, it was 40 people. And by the time I left, it was about 350, I think. If I wanted to actually control what would happen to the, the things I was making up, then I would have to start my own company. Double Fine Productions is born. Tim gathers a cadre of LucasArts followers and sets up shop in an old San Fran warehouse. Their first project, a mind-bending game that could only come from Schaefer's brain, Psychonauts. I had a game idea and I just um, went to the Game Developers Conference and met a bunch of people and talked about my game idea and it just happened to be the Game Developers Conference where Bill Gates announced the Xbox. Uh, for the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. And I was like, oh, there's an opportunity. They signed us up for, um, to do Psychonauts right away. With the green light from Gates and Microsoft, Double Fine begins to mold Tim's idea for a never-before-seen 3D adventure. When I first read the, the design document that he wrote, I was like thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be an insane amount of work. You betcha. Spearheading the campaign, Tim personally undertakes the daunting task of psychotic character development. However, 20 total characters lie in limbo thanks to countless hours lost on a new fad, social networking sites. There's this one that I was wasting all my time on. I was just on there all the time, and um, I was procrastinating. And then I was like, I've got to get to work. I've got to stop messing around with this site about friendships and and social graphs and interests and character. I gotta work on this document where I graph all the interests and hobbies and character relationships between all the characters in the game. And then I was like, what the, you know? Like. He made pages for each of them. I think they might be still up, actually. And it's like, you know, insane how much work he put into it. I mean, that was just hilarious. <gasps> hilarious and brilliant. The exercise results in an array of deep, colorful characters, including the quick-witted acrobatic hero, Rasputin. Hey, hey, all in a day's work for a psychonaut. He goes to a camp to learn how to use his psychic powers, and he comes in contact with all types of other strange characters. You better watch yourself, Goggolicious. What's that, hair boy? He has a lot of opportunities to use his, his powers, like telekinesis and levitation and bouncing on his little thought bubble and things like that to kind of jump into people's minds and explore their psyche. Hopping from mind to mind lends itself to potent creativity done in quintessential Schaefer fashion. Every level is totally different because it's in a different person's head, so the art style can be unique to each person. So there's a character who's obsessed with black velvet painting. So of course, when you go into his mind, the entire world is made out of black velvet. And there's a guy who thinks he's Napoleon Bonaparte, and you go into his head, and the Battle of Waterloo is going on. It was just fun to um, think of a character and then visualize that character's mind as an actual environment you could go to. All I have to say about jumping into people's minds is you really have to be prepared for what you're going to see, because it's insanity. Every person is absolutely different from the next, and you have no idea what you're going to jump into. March 2004, as production nears completion, Double Fine is hit with terrible news. Microsoft pulls out of its publishing agreement. It could have been a really bad time, but the team really stuck together, and no one quit, and uh, we pitched our game to every publisher in the world, and we um, eventually found one in Majesco. 
April 2005, Psychonauts drops with Majesco on the Xbox and PC for the PlayStation 2 release that follows two months later. Though sales are less than expected, the game wins tons of awards for writing, graphics, characters, and play. Psychonauts is possibly one of the best platformers made because it's got a little bit of something for everyone, and all of those things are done so well. Like, it has great action. Great humor. I'm gonna kill you so much. And a great storyline. And they all work together so well. Oh. Those high hopes are set on the upcoming Double Fine Endeavor, the highly anticipated twisted heavy metal melee, Brutal Legend. It's a concept that Schaefer has been stirring for quite a while. It's a game I've wanted to make for at least 10 years. I've been kind of planning in the back of my head. Brutal Legend's gonna have the same story and depth of character and stuff from all the games that we make here, but also have a lot of action and many explosions and Jack Black. And uh, there's some heavy metal in it, but we can't wait for it to come out. Until the sophomore release, the Double Fine standard has been set, and they're firmly standing behind their work. We're always going to have something that is kind of outside of the mold. We're not going to be making games just for the sake of rehashing what we've already done. I love it when people write in and they say one of our games is their favorite game of all time, and I would like every game we make to be somebody's favorite game, and feel that we have that kind of personal connection with the player. I want to just keep doing that.